American support. Beginning to become divided, President Biden just there on a trip to Kiev. We'll talk about that with Nyadja Vasina, who is joining me via Zoom from Kiev in Ukraine. Uh, Nadia Vasina is, an, uh, is, a, is a gymnast, a gold medalist, and, uh, and works closely with members of the Ukrainian military in defending her country. You're in Kiev today. What, what's it like? Uh, can you describe what it's like in Kiev today for us? Yeah, hi and hi everybody, and I'm glad to be the part of your show. Well, actually, in if we talk about Kiev, Kiev right now, um, like in a silence, we have a lot of uh, sirens, air sirens, but basically everything is still, you know, like before the storm, because everybody expected in Ukraine and in Kiev that something's gonna happen on the anniversary of this horrible war, but nothing happened in Kiev and in, and in many other cities. I'm not talking about the front lines because on the front lines, it's always extremely hard, extremely dangerous, like on the edge. But in Kiev, we like waiting for something. And today at night, it was attacked in a suburb of Kiev, very rough on the airport in one of the cities. And for example, myself, I, I live in a specific place, very specific place, very close to two important spots. I'm not going to tell exactly what it is, right. but Russian already did attack three times with the rockets and five times with the drones. So it was very dangerous and everything was like uh, in fire here. And some people, um, the building which is standing in front of mine, uh, totally destroyed and people died there. And five others buildings are destroyed. So it, it was very rough, like two or three times when they attacked my area. And I live very high, so it's pretty, <laughs> it's pretty difficult to hide. And so sometimes I sleep in the corridor and sometimes I even sleep close to the elevators because it's more safe, kind of more safe there. Yeah, so, when, when you're, being mis you're being hit by rockets and missiles, uh, there is no safe spot in a building. But, but Nadia, explain to me why, why you and so many other Ukrainians have stayed behind. I mean, you, you tell me that you live between two potential important targets that, that Russia may go after. Do you have a choice? Could you move? Could you go anywhere that would be safer? Could you leave the country and why have you stayed? Well, first of all, I was born in Ukraine. I'm proud there were, that I was born in Kiev. I love my country, hold my life on performing with my yellow and blue flag. Right. <laughs> And I feel happy about that. And I, for the last seven years, Ukraine was moving, moving, improving, improving. And uh, I'm happy, happy about that. The world didn't know that. So I cannot leave my country and just say, okay, bye-bye. Uh, when the war started in 2014, I was traveling from America to Ukraine, to Kiev, and then to Donetsk area to uh, hotspot to the front lines because I was performing in America. I was working, I was telling the world, I was joining the TV shows and the radios and everything. I was earning money and then I was going to the front lines and I was buying uh, very expensive uh, necessary stuff for soldiers. Uh, so I was like combining that. For this moment, when the full scale started in Ukraine, um, the first month, it was around Kiev. And all soldiers from the front lines, very cool, very brave, fantastic soldiers, they came uh, to, to fight for Kiev. And it's all my friends. That's my friends. And I realized that I cannot leave them. I can't see my guys, my friends standing on the front line on a horrible fire. And then and nobody will take care of them. And I was like, oh my gosh, no, I can't. So I was very close to them. And since that point, I left Kiev just once. I had, uh, as I work on TV and on radio also, uh, I had like little vacation in the end of summer and I went to Europe for two weeks. So, and this is it. And now I'm here. If I had possibility to go somewhere to work and earn, good money, big money, and to tell the world and then go to the front lines, I would combine that too. Now I don't have such possibilities. And why I'm staying here? Because 
you love your your home you cannot leave that right. i i took away a lot of important things my personal things uh, to another my apartment so in case some i i'm sure nothing gonna bad will be but in case of something all my documents all my jewelry and all that stuff is in another safe place i hope safe place <laughs> so do you know do you realize though how crazy that sounds to americans nadia that you would you would be there in in ukraine and working and take a vacation somewhere nice for a for a week or a few days and come back to a war zone i mean that's that on its surface just sounds kind of crazy yet that, that you've done that Plus, I mean, not too many people would expect someone who was once named the most beautiful woman in Ukraine, someone who was a gold medal uh, gymnast to be on the front lines supporting the Ukrainian military. I mean, you're you're quite the opposite of what people might expect when they see you. And I mean that as a compliment. Yeah, thank you. Well, uh, this is. It's all about us. It's all about Ukrainians. I feel happy and I was honored. I was honored when uh, I was combining again about uh, this crazy life, which you started to talk about. I was performing in Las Vegas and then I was taking a plane uh, and then taking a train and then taking a bus and then taking the Hummer, American Hummer <laughs> to get to the front lines. So, you know, and I feel honored to perform on stage in Las Vegas and then to come to Ukrainian heroes, touch them, see them, and understand that I can go to Las Vegas to perform there because of them, because I'm alive, because I'm under their protection, you know? So, and it's amazing feeling. It's like, it's crazy. It's totally crazy. When you perform in front of the soldiers, very close to the front lines, and you perform in an extremely dangerous place where soldiers say, let's put the music lower, uh, the volume of the music lower because the Russian army can hear us. So you're like, and the next day you go perform a uh, next building to MJ Grant and you talking to uh, David Copperfield. And you're like, what? <laughs> oh my gosh, no way. Like, uh, And I, every time I think that Steven Spielberg will come and say, it's a wrap, thank you. You know? It's wild. Uh, we're talking to Nadia Vecina here on the Scott Sancho. Nadia, uh, tell us, if you can, what the people of Ukraine feel, how the people feel about American support right now. Are, are you getting enough support from America and NATO allies to be able to defend your country against the Russian invasion? Would you Obviously, President Zelensky would like more. Uh, the American people, I, I think right now, are honestly divided. We don't want to see American troops involved. Uh, I, I think hopefully Americans see the importance of repelling Vladimir Putin, who will not stop just with Ukraine. Uh, and this is this is where we've got to draw the line. But Americans uh, are have been suffering at home as well economically, and we're sending millions of dollars in aid to a country that whose culture and, and aspects of, of foreign policy we may not understand. It's it's a tough position politically for Americans. Well, there is one very important thing that when Ukraine uh, was given nuclear weapon to Russia, there was a big document, very important document. In case of something, Russia protects Ukraine or in case of something, America and Britain take care of Ukraine. So it's not just our wish like, oh, we are losers. Come on, help us. We're, we're not going to do anything. No, we are fighting and we're not asking for military. We're asking for weapons. You're, like, you're, asking, you're asking for the weapons. You're asking for ammunition. And the people of Ukraine have been very brave for the past year, standing up to Putin and the Russian army. Uh, many people, many experts, many national security experts that I've talked to had no idea that would not in a million years have guessed that the Ukrainian people would have been this successful against the Russian invasion and been able to repel Russian forces for as long as you have. And now this is, as you talked about at the beginning of our conversation, a critical time with the seasons changing. I'm sure you and, and everyone in Ukraine are, are ready for another offensive. And, and Russia is obviously preparing for another push. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the problem is we really appreciate American support, emotional, uh, with the financial, with the equipment, with everything we really do appreciate. But the whole world, I think, made a huge mistake. One huge mistake that the world let these horrible things happen. 
We cannot stop earthquake. We cannot stop um, hurricanes, Catherine hurricane or something. We can prepare, we can study, but we cannot totally stop it. But we can stop the war. We even can stop the war before it started. And the whole world, when uh, at, uh, Russia next Crimea and then Donetsk, everybody, our ex-president Poroshenko was coming and telling like, look, this is the passports of Russians. Look, this is Russian ammunition. He was just bringing all that stuff to very important meetings and uh, J7, J8, and blah, blah, blah. And the world was like, oh, we're concerned. And Poroshenko was saying like, come on, we have totally to change the world, the system. Nobody heard us. Then when full scale started by Russia, the whole world was like sitting with popcorn and watching all this drama. But no, everybody was watching like a movie like, oh, this is so bad. And nobody did anything. If the whole world were united like today, at the beginning of full invasion, it took, uh, in 2022, at the beginning, okay, in the middle, everything would be totally different. And right now, uh, of course, we really appreciate the support. But again, uh, usual civilians, Americans, British, uh, European, no matter, even Ukrainians, a lot of, don't understand how expensive the war is. Every, yesterday, uh, two months ago, on uh, New Year's night, I bought a vehicle, good vehicle. Okay, I'm here. I'm sorry. That's okay. It, we've just okay. we we just had our our connection with Nadia Vasina cut out. She is back with us. It looks like you're without power there now, and yeah. Uh, wait a second. I will find some candles or something. Okay. Do you hear me? <laughs> I I, I yes. can hear you. I mean, what can you tell us? What just happened? Uh, is is it oh, normal okay. for the power to go out and keep that often? Are, are you under attack right now? Well, I, I will with my pine tree, <laughs> Christmas tree. It's <laughs> at least you can see me. <laughs> well, it's it's the reality in Kiev. We always have after Russia started attack by our targets. One of the targets is very close to me, as you remember, to not to have heating in the apartment, not to have light water. So the winter could be horrible for Ukrainians. But if it's not a problem for Ukrainians, as you see, we have <laughs> everything prepared. So um, it happens. But for the last several months, it was, oh, okay, here we go. Back on, this is right? It. Yeah, it can be turned off right now again for more, I don't know, for like really hours. And right now they're fixing, they're fixing this system. So we have light almost like the whole day because before that it was like two hours per day. And then this is it. Can you imagine? So, and now they fix it. And I hope that it's just like some fixing system problems or right. something like that. Yeah. So, so now, Nadia, back, wait, yeah, I, I need yeah. to wrap things up here, Nadia, but where can, where can we find more information? Where can we follow you? Obviously I'm, I'm following you on Instagram. Where are you on social media, your website, all of that information? Well, every, everywhere in Google, uh, people can search me like Nadia Vasina, gymnast, Ukraine. It will be a lot of Wikipedia, Facebook, Instagram. My, uh, my website is an artist and my website as a volunteer. And if people like trust and want to help and support, we're really open to, for that because war is extremely expensive. And every day, as I told before, I bought a vehicle. Yesterday, boys sent me the pictures of destroyed vehicle because uh, it was hit by Russian uh, artillery. So thanks God they are alive, but there is no vehicle anymore. So it's very expensive and very difficult. And I give my own money, but I, I can't earn money right now good in ukraine because it's a really difficult situation so like all to, but we appreciate the support and we honestly need it much more much much more i can hear the emotion in your voice and and we can see it on the zoom broadcast nadia uh, stay safe you're a beautiful brave woman thank you for talking with us and uh, would love to have you back on the show again soon my pleasure thank you so much